Hello and welcome to the Fashion Jungle, I'm B. This is the fifth episode of the Fashion Journal series where we discuss intriguing people and iconic photos that left a mark on fashion history and pop culture. Today we are going to talk about the mysterious relationship Marilyn Monroe may or may not have had with 35th US President John F. Kennedy. Or at least that was my prompt for writing that script and then There's just gonna be lots of stuff in here. I promise. Oh no, fuck the hair, I can't do it. Oh. Rainbow! Whee! Can you see that? Can you just about not see that? That is so annoying. This is my new setup. It's very simple at the moment, but it's a work in progress. Oh my god, yes. Oh, can you see there's a rainbow? Wee! Wee! Hello, rainbow! How are you? In this series, we have already discussed the relationship of fashion icon Carolyn Bassett Kennedy with JFK Jr. in the 90s or disco queen Bianca Jagger and Mick Jagger in the 70s even the rekindling of Benefa in the 2000s and consequently the 2020s so feel free to browse this playlist of course Marilyn was already pretty much an icon before her untimely death but after that, the conspiracy theories and the gossip just have reached another level. She was rumored to have affairs with both Kennedy brothers and apparently she was dealt with because she threatened to tell the media about their unfaithfulness and their ties with organized crime. Yikes. Always fun to be a US president. <laughs> There's just so much to uncover, so let's get into it. Marilyn Monroe, or originally Norma Jean Mortensen, later called Norma Jean Baker, was born in 1926 in Los Angeles. Fun fact, Elizabeth II, rest in peace, was also born in the same year, and they have actually once met in 1956 in Buckingham Palace. And of course, they're, they're both 30. <laughs> Which is just so weird because that's just not, they don't live in your head as them being the same age. Plus they're obviously both such different figures representing such different ideals. So I just find this fun fact hilarious, in fact fun, and a fact. This was a time in Hollywood as well when actors, especially female actors, were not really separated from their roles in films. The ditzy sexy clueless blonde was mostly the kind of persona that she was associated with both on and off screen. Studios were not really making an effort to protect their stars' personal lives, instead they kind of sold it off and monetized it which later became the downfall of many actors and actresses. Marilyn was also probably prone to mental health struggles. She did have a harder childhood. She was also born on the 1st of June, which makes her a Gemini. Um, God bless, you know what I mean? I think we all should be just a little bit nicer to Geminis. I mean, yes, they are crazy. But I have a sneaking suspicion that they are actually having a worse time in their own hands than the shitty time they put you through. So there's that. Marilyn's mother first married an abusive drunk from which married she had two children, Marilyn's half-siblings, who Marilyn didn't really meet up until she was like literally 18. As a young child, Marilyn was with foster parents a lot, while her biological mom got a mental breakdown and was diagnosed with paranoid schizophrenia, 
So Marilyn just moved around a lot and was probably taken advantage of by some of her foster parents and to avoid being sent back to an orphanage she married her 21 year old neighbor after her 16th birthday. Just look at this photo though of Marilyn as a young wife in the 40s wearing short shorts. I just I just think she's a bit of a savage. Like that poor guy, his whole life he must have been like, but no bro, I'm telling you, I used to be married to Marilyn Monroe and everyone was probably like, yeah bestie, you wish. <laughs> Dude was of course against her career, so what can you do? In 1944, she met photographer David Canover, Conover, Conover. Anyway, um, while she was working in a factory, where him was sent to take morale-boosting pictures. What the fuck was the 20th century? Um, well. We can't really be proud from a world history point of view either right now. Anyway, she started modeling already, mostly appearing in male magazines because her body was more pin-up rather than high fashion. To be more employable, she started straightening her hair and lightening it. In 1946, she signed a six-month acting contract with 20th Century Fox, first with the name Marilyn Monroe. After the scandal of her nude calendar pictures resurfacing from 1949, she gained even more popularity and box office success. I guess people were interested in the once broke, now pretty and nude girl. Weird fascination, but hey. In 52, she enters a highly publicized relationship with New York Yankees baseball star Joe DiMaggio. Uh, one of the most famous sports personalities of the era, or whatever. Meanwhile, she's continued to be typecast as the dumb childish blonde, innocently unaware of the havoc her sexiness causes around her. Whoever wrote that premise or character profile might just have a special place in hell. <laughs> Of course, Marilyn would like more serious roles because she has depth and she's not just her hoo-ha, completely unheard of. No, seriously, this was unheard of in the 20th century. But at this point, she's already basically established as a sex symbol and an emblem of America's sex revolution. In 1953, some of her most iconic movies come out, namely Niagara, Gentlemen Prefer Blondes, and How to Marry a Millionaire. At this point as well, her and her makeup artist Whitney Snyder have developed her signature look, which was arched dark eyebrows, fair skin, and red lips. This iconic moment was of course in 1955, during the filming of The Seven Year Itch. Her then-husband baseball star guy flipped when he saw the pictures. He was not just jealous, of course also abusive. So only after nine months of marriage, Marilyn has filed for divorce. Divorce, babes. Divorce. So, so not funny. Let me just read this, okay? <clears throat> Monroe had become one of 20th Century Fox's biggest stars, but her contract had not changed since 1950, meaning that she was paid far less than other stars of her stature and could not choose her project. Her attempts to appear in films that would not focus on her as a pinup had been thwarted by the studio head executive Daryl F. Preck Zenuck, who had a strong personal dislike of her and did not think she would earn the studio as much revenue in other types of roles. Under pressure from the studio's owners, Spyroscorus, 
Zenit had also decided that Fox should focus exclusively on entertainment to maximize profits and cancel the production of any serious films. In January 1954, he suspended Monroe when she refused to begin shooting yet another musical comedy, The Girl in Pink Tights. Let me guess, this Daryl guy was probably rejected by Marilyn once or twice. Marilyn was not a critically acclaimed actress for a majority of her career. She never received an Academy Award nomination, further fueling the pipeline that says sexy and attractive does not deserve recognition or appreciation other than that of the male gaze. Actually, the first time she was viewed as a serious and talented actress by critics was in 1959. 13 years after her first appearance on screen during the promotion of The Seven Year Itch, which was actually one of her last three finished movies. During the filming of her last couple of movies, she became famous for being hard to work with, just not showing up, being absent, being difficult. In 1962, while filming Something's Got to Give, she was actually fired by Fox, which was only two months before her unfortunate passing. And we have finally arrived to the Kennedy portion of the video. Um, writing the script, I just realized a lot of things. Um, this whole Kennedy thing was right before her passing, by the way. And before that, I obviously had to give you all the context of how she was treated and whatnot. Um, but yeah, like realizing things. <laughs> Let's get into it. Daylight, please do not go before I finish. Um, blah, blah, blah. Um, <clears throat> where was I? Not the construction, <laughs> not the construction, babes. According to this article I'm looking at from glamour.com, Monroe and JFK were first introduced in 1954 by Peter Lawford, JFK's brother-in-law. According to biographer James Sparta, when Kennedy tired of her, he passed her off to his brother. That is one of the most mortifying sentences I've read in a while. Um, however, biographer Donald Soto claims there are only selected confirmed occasions when Monroe and JFK were together between October 1961 and August 1962, he writes, the pair met four times. One of those times was, of course, Marilyn's infamous performance at JFK's birthday gala extravaganza at Madison Square Garden. My favourite reinterpretation of this moment is, of course, in Lana Del Rey's national anthem music video. I have mentioned this music video before because I love it. And also, <laughs> Uh, because it's just so full of beautiful moments and gorgeous imagery, but at the same time nuggets of American fashion and American higher society. And we know everything in fashion and culture is connected, um, or in everything else, everything is connected all the time is what I mean, but the dress that Marilyn is wearing during this performance is of course the dress that Kim Kardashian has borrowed from Ripley's so she could wear it at the 2022 Met Gala where she famously could not zip it up. I'm just mentioning it in case you somehow weren't aware, which I highly doubt, but here you go, here, there is the connection for you. Anyways, you would love to know my opinion on that, wouldn't you? Not now, though. Marilyn attended the gala on the 9th of May, March, May 19th, my typing is terrible, wearing an ermine coat. As she walks on stage, she drops the coat to reveal the dress underneath. She is, of course, rumored to have worn nothing underneath. Oh, sure. Because she's just a naughty little girl in real life, too, isn't she, just? Let me quote this paragraph from luxurylondon.co.uk. This pun is the height of journalism, I swear. Okay, so. Marilyn sang Happy Birthday, Mr. President, to John F. Kennedy with a sexual potency that couldn't fail to be lost on the 50,000 strong audience, the words pouring out of her mouth like slow-melting chocolate. 
Kennedy himself was sardonic about the performance which set the tongues that were already wagging about the duo's possible affair into overdrive. I can now retire from politics after having had a happy birthday sung to me in such a sweet, wholesome way. JFK stated with a one must assume an eyebrow raised somewhere near the weary top of his hairline. I can't, I can't, I'm sorry. <laughs> oh gosh. Anyway, at this event was the only real photograph taken where in the frame you can both see JFK and Marilyn Monroe. The other photos circling on Pinterest um, are actually only reenactments. In this one legit photo though is also Attorney General Robert F. Kennedy, or as I like to call him, Alfonso. <laughs> Just joking. Bobby. We all like to call him Bobby, don't we? It's Bobby Kennedy. The reality that I've realised while researching this is that there's no real story here. Really. <laughs> There are talks of connections with Patricia and Peter Lawford, who we mentioned before, and how they help private parties, and that's probably where Marilyn and the Kennedy brothers met, but in one story, it's a restaurant, another one, it's a party at the Lawford Beach House, uh, in one story it's John, the other story it's Bobby. Apparently the beach house was bugged and the Kennedys were whispering state secrets to Marilyn. There was one story where supposedly Marilyn took her own life because Bobby had cancelled on a Saturday night date they had, or there's another rumour where Marilyn was pregnant with a Kennedy baby, just all completely outrageous. And I think the only reality is is that Marilyn Monroe was taken advantage of all her life. She still does not get justice and people are telling her story for her. Even the New York Mirror announcement when she passed read, Marilyn Monroe kills herself, found nude in bed, hand on the phone, took 40 pills. Her narrative was just never hers. She was talented and she was giving and that's what I shall remember. As always, thank you so much for watching. Please like and subscribe, comment if you have something nice to say. I will see you in my next video.